most important thing in your prayer, which is the mandatory acts, the duties in prayer. Wajibatu as-salat. And the definition of wajib is something that when you do it, you're rewarded for doing it. And if you don't do it, you're sinful and will be granted bad deeds for not doing it. And we have uh, uh, a number of duties that must be observed in your prayer. But the duties, these wajibat, these mandatory acts and rhetorics, are lesser in importance than the pillars. Because the pillars, even if you left it, if you left a pillar unintentionally, unknowingly, by forgetfulness, by mistake, your prayer is invalid. Nothing can compensate it. You must offer it, otherwise your prayer is invalid. In mandatory acts, if you abandon one of them deliberately, your prayer is invalid. Deliberately. But if you forgot or if you did not know it was mandatory, in this case, your prayer is valid. If you remember during the prayer, you must compensate it by offering two sujood of sahu, two prostrations of forgetfulness. And we will come to mention how to perform this, when to perform this, uh, inshallah, later on. Okay, so what are the duties of the prayer? Number one, all the glorifications, meaning all the takbir. So, excluding the first takbir, which is takbir al ihram the inauguration takbir, as this is a pillar, excluding it, everything else that we say during prayer to move from one pillar to the other is mandatory. So, I must say, Allahu Akbar, when I go for ruku'ah, if I forgot, and I just went for ruku'ah, I've abandoned one of the duties of the salat and I have to compensate that with sujood al-sahu, forgetfulness, prostrations. But if I am lazy, I did this out of laziness, I just went down and said, Subhan Rabbi al-Azim, my prayer is invalid because I skipped it intentionally. So, what about rising up from the rukur? I don't say Allahu Akbar. What should I say? Actually, when you rise up from rukur, you say, Sami Allahu liman hamidah. And this is also a mandatory act. So it's a wajib. You have to say Sami Allahu liman hamida. But this is said only by the Imam and the individual. So a follower or al ma'mum does not say Sami Allahu liman hamida. He hears this from the Imam saying to him, Allah responds to those who praise him. But I, as a follower, do not say this. I don't say, Sami Allahu liman hamidah. So this is a mandatory thing to say. It is mandatory upon me as a follower, including the imam and the individual, to say, Rabbana lakal hamd. Or Rabbana wa lakal hamd. Or Allahumma Rabbana lakal hamd. Or Allahumma Rabbana wa lakal hamd. And all of these are authentic. So whatever you say is okay. This is mandatory. And this is something that I have to say 
in the second and the third duties of the Salat. This is number two. Rabbana wa lakal hamd. This is number three. Number four of the duties of prayer is to say, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. This is the bare minimum. You have to say it once in the rukur position, in the bowing position. You can say it once, and the sky is the limit. So the bare, bare minimum is one, and the sunnah is to say it three and above. Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al Azim, Subhana Rabbi al Azim. And if you want to add, Subhan Rabbi Azim wa bihamdih, that's good. If you want to add other um, prostration, um, not prostration, bowing, adhkar, this is okay. Allahumma laka raka'at, wa bika amant, wa laka aslamt, khash'a laka sam'i, wa basari, wa azmi, wa mukhi, all of this, the sky is there, so many things you can say, but the bare minimum is Subhana Rabbi Al Azim. You can say Sabuhun Qaddusu Rabbi Al Malaikati Wal Ruh, and so forth. Number five, you should, in prostration, say the dhikr prescribed, which is Subhana Rabbi Al A'la. Again, minimum is one. Subhana Rabbi Al A'la wa bihamdih. If you can, if you want, you can add whatever additional dhikr you want to that. After only saying minimum of one, Subhana Rabbi Al A'la. And this was because the Prophet ordered us to say this, alayhi salatu wasalam, when he said, uh, "Praise Allah Azza wa Jal." by saying Subhana Rabbi Al Azim in Rukur, as for Subhana Rabbi Al A'la, make that in your sujood. So you have to do this. You can't say it in Arabic, in, in English, and you cannot switch by saying Subhana Rabbi Al A'la in Rukur and Subhana Rabbi Al Azim in sujood, because this is not how it was prescribed, and this is a mandatory act. Number six that you say, Rabbi Ghfirli. And the Prophet, whenever he sat between the two prostrations, and this happens in every single rak'ah, because every rak'ah has two prostrations, and you must sit between them. So when you sit between them, you say, Rabbi Ghfirli, Rabbi Ghfirli, and you repeat that. Or you say the other dua, Rabbi Ghfirli, Urhamni, Wa'afini, Wajburni, Wahdini, Urzuqni, this is also part of the sunnah. Is it mandatory? It's an issue of dispute. Some say it's mandatory, some say it is sunnah mu'akkada, and the most authentic opinion is that it is mandatory. Never we were told that the Prophet had ever, alayhi salatu wasalam, skipped it. Number seven is to Offer the first tashahud, and this happens only in Maghrib or any other four rak'ah prayer. In Fajr, this does not take place because it has only one last tashahud. There's no first tashahud. So for this saying at tahiyyatu lillah, etc., it's mandatory. And number eight, to sit down is also mandatory. It's not a pillar because it was reported that once the Prophet ﷺ was leading the companions in Dhuhr or Asr and he did not sit for the first tashahud. He stood up directly to the third. So the companions brought this to his attention by saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. This is how you notify the Imam if he had done a mistake. Now, the, st the Prophet was already standing for the third rak'ah, which is a pillar by itself. 
So he said to them, or actually waved and signed and pointed to them to stand up. And before he concluded the prayer with salam, he offered two prostrations of forgetfulness. So from this, scholars said, aha, now we understand that the first tashahud is not a pillar. Otherwise, the Prophet would have not let go and compensated it only with prostration of forgetfulness. This is an indication that it is mandatory, but when you forget it, you simply move on and offer two prostrations of forgetfulness. So these are the eight categories of the duties or wajibat.